Welcome to The Profile. My name is Gary Dunn and I'm your host. And tonight, on the chair or the couch? The chair. No, what's it? I call it a chair, not a couch anymore, Nick. Hmm. It's comfortable, whatever it is, Gary. <laughs> the comfy chair. Yes, the comfy chair sitting tonight is a man who's a father of three, a grandfather of five, an absolutely awesome bass player. And I mean, I've always known that, but I got to play with him if a few weeks ago and most grateful to to play with you Mick and, and have you here on the show. Thanks Gary. Th thank you for coming. Good to be here, and, thanks. Uh, yep. Um, first question Mick, where were you born? Aberdeen, Scotland. Aberdeen. Aberdeen. <laughs> uh, pretty cold place, a little bit different to Perth. Yes. Uh, came here as uh, ten pound tourists in 1963, mm. uh, went to Morrowa in the wheat belt. Wow. Bit of a change to Aberdeen. Absolutely. And uh, have been in Perth most of my life. Hmm. Yeah, Scotland's such a beautiful place. I was born in Newcastle, northeast of England, which is right on the border there. And know it well. You're a Nova Castrian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> been up to Scotland a few times and, yeah, through the glens and love yeah. my scotch. And, yes, yeah. I noticed a nice bottle of scotch out the back, uh, <laughs> Gary. It uh, <laughs> proved your, uh, your, your appreciation of the fine drop. Absolutely. <laughs> I try and get my producer to um, to help me in that area, but yeah, a bit lacking tonight. Sorry, and look, you know, sorry about the pizza and the food. And it's just too many people out the back, Gary, and we're here working. And yes, yeah. that's right. Look, <laughs> I've got to commend Procopy for being, you know, for, for letting us do this here. And although um, the catering and the wardrobe lady at times <laughs> seem to go missing. And well, may I say you're looking very dapper. Thank you so much. Maybe dressed for a funeral, but I'm quite possibly the oldest artist you've had on the show. <laughs> well, you know, Strawny, our cameraman, or Strachan, as some people call him, Strachan. actually had to dress me because the wardrobe lady was on the phone mm. doing something with a Pub Legends uh, gig. Mm. Yeah. And the wardrobe lady is? Um, Mrs. Mrs. Simpson. Mrs. Simpson, yes. <laughs> I thought as much. Look, sorry to, uh, to wail off track there, Mick. So nice to have you here. Look, you're a bass player, as I mm. know. You're vocalist. Um, you dabble on guitar and, and a few other things. And yeah, I like to hang a Stratocaster on the wall and pretend I can play it. Uh, but it's uh, it's funny, you know. You've spent a life, well, an adult life, playing bass, and uh, but probably a frustrated guitarist. Love love my guitarists. <laughs> you know, listen to all the best and uh, throw on the Eric Clapton Beano album and uh, press the blues driver and uh, pretend I'm Clapton. But uh, it's a bass player's secret desire. And uh, played piano as a kid. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, so up to the age of 10, I played piano. So your uh, parents were musical? Or? Uh, they love music. Uh, I think Dad actually used to say he played cornet in the Salvation Army Band in Peterhead, north of Aberdeen. Mm. Uh, and probably did. Uh, never saw any evidence, but they loved dancing. They were out dancing all the time and, uh, and they loved yeah. music. And uh, I was. Uh, eavesdropping on John Lemin's story earlier and I had a very similar sort of upbringing we were in Morava as the only Scottish family for probably 300 miles in any direction. <laughs> uh, I would get dragged out of bed uh, in my dressing gown at the age of you know, 10 to 13 or yeah. whatever uh, to perform in front of my mother and father's uh, drunken but very lovely friends, great, great friends. Uh, and I would have to sing the Scottish soldier or something yeah. typically Scottish. Um, Dreadful confession. Well, I was going to ask you something we didn't know about you, but we just found that I out. I think that was one, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, being Scottish, I suppose, and with no offence to Scottish people whatsoever, I suppose you were the, you didn't have to pay for you, did they? Is that thing about Scots? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, what was the moment in your life, Mick? Or Michael? You... Uh, oh, look, I've been Michael professionally for years, and we'll, we'll get to that, but, uh, you know, I was always Mick as a, a young bloke in a and a muso, and most guys in the industry know me as Mick, so I'm yeah. very happy with Mick. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm happy with Mr. Dunn. Yeah, <laughs> I, get, I, I get called other names as well, Mr. Dunn. But uh... <laughs> So what was the moment in your life that you went, all right, this is what I'm going to do? Uh, obviously, pro probably started, because um, obviously I had an ear for music. Uh, the music lessons went pretty well, and uh, the Beatles actually hit the scene in late 62 in the UK. Mm. And I recall, uh, we used to watch... Um, 
uh, Clifford did in the shadows and that, so they were sort of you know, pop idols at the time. Yeah. But the Beatles were just something different. And uh, yeah. you know what we know now, I didn't know then. You know where, where the music came from. Uh, I mean, their roots uh, was pretty much in country and western and skiffle. Uh, yeah. The Stones was very much the blues. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't know that at the time, but we found those forms of music through those mm. bands. So it was an eye opener. Uh, but very quickly we were on the boat and uh, and here in sort of 63. Um, but as soon as I saw the Beatles, I thought, you know, that's the sort of thing I'd like to do. I'd like to entertain and and, uh, and that. And uh, the it was an interesting trans, uh, transition from piano uh, to a country town where we didn't have a piano. Uh, and I ended up uh, auditioning for and getting into the local brass band, which wasn't hard because there was probably X number of seats and Y number of people. So, um, and uh, there I played the, the double, the, 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 the B-flat bass, the, the big, the big oh. sort of tuba, um, which, you know, when you're five foot nothing carrying it around the school oval on, you know, playing marching songs, a lot mm. of fun, uh, not. Uh, Six foot. Uh, I've grown a fair bit since yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, that was a good grounding in music. Uh, learnt, I, I learned to read uh, probably more than I had just learning piano, basically. Um, but I had a hankering to play something more fashionable, such as yeah. guitar. And so, what sort of music influenced you, in, apart from the Beatles? Um, AM radio was fantastic in those days. Yeah. You know, we'd, we'd sit in the car, all the kids would sort of come in from the farm. Do you remember what station? That, oh, that 6PR, was? 6KY, okay. uh, 6IX, that was about all there, yeah. there was in those days. Um, still the same. Yeah, in, in, in a way, <laughs> with that sort of beautiful sound you still get on an AM radio. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, it seems strange today, but we heard every single that was released by Jimi Hendrix, Cream, right. those sorts of guys, Bob Dylan, all those artists. Uh, came through on commercial radio in those days, mm. uh, which was lost after a period of time mm. until 96 FM sort of came along yeah. and FM kicked in. Mm. So, um, first concert you would have went to? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's, well, this. What year would it have 1967, been? 1967, okay. school in Perth. Yep. Um, which boarding school? Did you go to? Well, I, I actually boarded at Swan Lee, which wasn't a school. It was a sort of dorm for country kids. Yep. Uh, and we got bussed to Governor Stirling. Okay. Uh, next to Guildford Grammar, for those yeah. of us whose families couldn't afford to go to Guildford Grammar. <laughs> um, and, uh, but that was good. You know, they, they were good years. Uh, yeah. But they used to let us go to the Royal Show. And mm. in those days, 67, 68, uh, you would see uh, the red hot acts of the day in a tent at the Royal Show. And I saw the Valentines. Uh, with Bon Scott, yeah, uh, wow, that's and, right, and Vince Maloney, yes, uh, the Zoot, yeah, Daryl Cotton, B. Birdles, uh, Ronnie Burns, those sorts of acts you would see in a tent at the Royal wow. Show for Nicks. Yeah, um, first real concert, I suppose, was a few years later. I suppose the the one that well, two that really come to mind were the the Beatty Park concert with uh, Chain as the local support act. Manfred Mann's Earth Band, wow. Free, one of my favourite bands. Yeah. Deep Purple, another of my favourite bands. Uh, only to be topped a couple of years later by uh, Led Zeppelin at Subi Oval. Wow. The greatest concert of all time. Yeah. Mm. So um, there's a story going around. I mean, I interviewed Dave Hull a while ah. ago. Let's, I, mean, Good I just want to talk about this first because I know. Get it out there? Yes. Um, you were actually the responsible for breaking his finger. In an offhand, offhand, how good is that? Um, in, a, in, a, in a strange sort of way. Um, most musicians, as you probably know, uh, Gary, because there's a bit of a sports uh, uh, thing happening here, um, are frustrated sportsmen or something else. Yes. And uh, so <laughs> most of the bands that I've played in, we've taken a footy on tour, we've done all sorts of things. Indoor soccer teams. Exactly, you know. cricket teams, yeah. you know, even if you can't get the ball on the pitch, but then yes. again, neither can Richard Johnson once. <laughs> uh, but... Um, we were playing kick to kick, uh, local oval in uh, in North Perth, and uh, Dave got the old bang on the slow guitar finger. Mm. Uh, we were in a band which had the residency at Gobbles way before. What your band, band was that called? That was called Bandage, which Bandage. is very appropriate actually. Because <laughs> Dave ended up with quite a large one. Um, but uh, so we were. It was Al Cash, yeah, Brenton Fosdyke. So, Sorry, yes, yeah. Al Cash, myself, yeah. Brenton Fosdyke, Dave Hull. Wow. Um, mix of sort of blues, rock, and you know more commercial yep. stuff, and uh, so Dave broke his finger in the afternoon, off to hospital. I'm all apologetic. 
probably took him to hospital, can't recall. Um, but he uh, struggled to play the gig that night. He couldn't get the slide on the finger. Mm. So he said, oh, I'm going to stick it on here and play over the top. Mm. And the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Good story. Unreal, because, I mean, just being on stage with yourself, yeah. and um, John Meyer was there as well, but Dave and, and Mick Whittle, and mm. it was just amazing standing next to him, watching him do that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's, it, I mean, he's not the only guy in the world that plays that style, and I think by yeah. his own, in his own interview with yes. your, your good self, he was sort of yeah. talking about you know, lap steel guys and that yes. sort of thing, but, you know, it was born of necessity, mm. uh, but, um, you know, and, and I, you know, still a good friend of Dave's and, and and I know that he's found different yeah, you can get further up the neck and things like that and uh, gets a whole different sound out of it and of course he's deservedly internationally acclaimed as a result of it. So. Do you get any commission from that sort of stuff? No, no Dave, I'm still waiting for the check mate, but, uh, <laughs> but no, it's just nice to be a part of history. Yeah, and just on that gig, uh, Peko's gig obviously, yeah, yeah. wonderful to be a part great, of A great that. night, great cause for, yeah. for all the wrong reasons. Um, yes. But, um, you know, we wish the big fella well. Mm. And, uh, I got uh, to meet you. Right? Yeah, and yeah. I used to go and watch you when I was well, younger. Gary, wasn't the camaraderie fantastic? You know? yeah. and, and, and even at the rehearsals, you know, That's we had the, 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 the 80s band and the, and, the sort of, uh, and the sort of 70s band with the older mm. crocs like me. Yeah. Um, but guys were sort of mixing and sort of sharing stories of having seen each other, if not played yes. with each other and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, backstage on that night was just, was just fantastic. It was a night of awe. It was like yeah. you're playing with the people you go, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And we're actually human. Yes, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good. And, and, and uh, you know, just, just from my point of view, uh, being invited to play with uh, you know, Dave and John and Rick and Paul and uh, you know, all the guys that were on stage that night and, and yourself, you know, it, it, it was just fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Really well arranged by yourself and uh, Mrs. Simpson, the tea lady. Yeah, the tea lady. <laughs> He's not making tea very well or uh, I mean, I had to get Strawny to do my tie. And... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's on. He's on the phone to start. Hasn't, hasn't nodded off or starry yeah. tonight. I think yeah. or something. But um, okay. Let's um, let's look at uh, the first uh, single you bought. The oh, first album. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, Mum and Dad had sort of singles and albums. In fact, I, I, I this is, a, I could have kept this one for last too. Yes. I could probably give you every word of every song of all the famous musicals, South Pacific, Oklahoma. Wow. Mum and Dad played them relentlessly uh, and you know, bright golden haze on the meadow, mate. It's all in there. <laughs> you know. um, I'll be the bloke doddering around in the old person's home, you know, bringing up every word of every one of those songs. Uh, but the first one that I bought uh, was in Australia, so 10 years old, 1963, Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand, mm. second single, I think. Yeah. Um, just captivated me, that whole... The rhythm guitar sound and that, the, the, the sound mm. those guys had was just really chunky and, and, and different. Mm. Um, uh, album wise, I, I think I got the Easy Beats yep. 3, which had Sorry on it, which I just thought yep. was one of the greatest rock songs ever written. Didn't know who Van Den Young were at that stage, but it was pretty yep. obvious after a while. They were sensational. So obviously the Beatles were with that who they were, brilliant, yeah. and then you talked about the Stones and, and, and a little bit yeah. of stuff off to the side, is that, because I want to talk to you about the Perth music scene between like yes. probably 68 and 72, yeah. the whole Fatty Lumpkin era, the whole, it was yeah. when I was, I was about 12 years old I think and I discovered and tried to sneak in and yeah. saw all you guys yeah. playing, what, well, what the, was that all, how was that for you and... Yeah. The, the great thing was, uh, Gary, there were gigs like Anzac House and um, the Coliseum, which catered to a younger crowd. The Coliseum in particular, um, yeah. you know, no age limit, so no, no alcohol and no age limit. So you'd go there and you'd watch. Um, I mean, I, I, I probably started going there when I was 16. Uh, I was working my way into my first band and, yeah. and, and wanting to get inspired. And I'd see... Yeah, John Worrell and Roy Daniels and those sorts of guys. Uh, the band that just blew everyone away, I still think the best live band that Perth ever produced was Bakery. Yeah. Uh, and the first version of Bakery was a four piece yeah. uh, before Rex Bullen joined it. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, Peter Walker, as always, mm -hmm. Hank and Eddie, uh, mm -hmm. drums and bass, uh, and a guy called John Pugh from the East mm -hmm. who was a singer, guitarist, and yeah. played flute. Um, 
and they were mesmerizing. They did uh, you know, songs like 40,000 Headmen by Traffic, and it was just mesmerizing stuff. And it was a bit like the Beatles, you know, the, the, the four musos were all good in their own right, but for some reason, they just came together and it was, they had an aura uh, and they were splendid. And I understand what you're saying here, because I've interviewed many people on this show and mm. they all talk about bakery in, in yeah. this way. Yeah, 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 and of course, then they, you know, there's a few personnel changes. I think Lindsay was Lindsay in the band Wells, for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, different singers came through. John Pugh went back to the east, uh, but when Rex joined and they became a five-piece, mm. they really uh, uh, they nailed it. And yeah. uh, I still have a very scratched copy of the Rock Mass for Perth with the Bakery <laughs> and uh, you know, at the Cathedral. Every kid in Perth on those Sunday nights at St George's Cathedral would go and watch Bakery play a Rock Mass. Mm. It was incredible. So in that time, what else was going on? Uh, uh, I was studying. Uh, I was out at uni uh, studying urban and regional planning. Um, did, I, did I say curtain? If I did, I should have said wait, because it was. It was an yeah, institute of technology right. in those days. That's the same institute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was a... Uh, well, I actually started in architecture, and then I converted over to urban planning and uh, graduated. Um, I actually practice as an urban planner as we speak. Yeah. So finally getting it right. Other jobs throughout your life because you supplement um, your income. Yeah, yeah I, well, I, I um, Gary, I did. I, I played professionally in the sort of in the seventies, uh, but then I got offered a job, uh, you know, in in the trade that I'd put behind. Somebody needed a an in house planner, and uh, uh, I think just a few doors opened at the right time, and I spent you know, most of the next forty years uh, juggling music and a profession uh, to the point where. Uh, one stage I was working full time, working at Beethoven six nights a week, uh, get home at six o'clock, have dinner, go to bed for three hours, get up, do four hours at Beethoven's, go home, sleep for three hours, get a shower, get up, you know, um, not a lot of fun, uh, start a young family in that time, but yeah, you, life goes on, you were young, you were able to do it, um, and, and no regrets, it was fantastic, but as, as things went on, uh, more responsibility, um, I got opportunities thrown at me so there was a bit more day work and a bit less mm. music um, but at the same time I found myself moving away from rock into other forms of music uh, jazz and that where you know there weren't as many gigs anyway so you'd sort of do mm. a once a week or whatever and you know bands like Manteca and that where you you know you'd, you'd rehearse and you just do a gig but you weren't out there doing the the flood of gigs that we used to do in the 70s. Mm. Um, Lumpkin, I, I say this to people and they say, how did you actually do it? Uh, but Lumpkin in its heyday was doing 10 gigs a week. Mm. We had Tuesdays off. Monday night was the Sand Grapper, Wednesday was the q -Dale, followed by the Top Hat. So you'd pack up everything at the q -Dale. And this is one transit van, yeah. column PA. Transit I think we actually invested in two, two tweeters on the top, <laughs> uh, a couple of the horns. Bullets. Uh, <laughs> and you'd throw everything into the purple van that, yeah. that, that Rex drove um, and uh, you'd head into town, you'd do the top hat, you know, taking the Hammond B3 up the back steps of the top hat in the rain. Who'd carry that up? The band, you'd just Everyone. plug in. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, we had road, yeah, we had roadies or yeah. crew, I think as John Lemin said, um, uh, Gus Warburton and uh, you know, Ramondo and guys like that were always around. Um, but fundamentally, you know, at the end of the night, you're packing up your own gear and that sort of thing. But, yeah. you know, there'd be Six nights in a pub, followed by four of those nights, followed by a nightclub. It's fantastic. Mm. Even played Top Hat on the night that it turned into Connections. That took us a bit by surprise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you join in. Um, so, um, okay. So who are you listening to on the way here in the in your game? Ah, um, I've discovered um, iTunes, Gary. You should check it out. So, iTunes. Yeah, iTunes. I have an iPhone. Yeah, yeah, it's a little icon on your phone. You'll, 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 yeah. you'll pick it up, mate. No, I, uh, I bought a new car last year. I don't and, want to uh, pay dollar nineteen a song. I'm only joking. Yeah, we, we built a new car, the, a Mazda, and we were sort of sitting there, the, you know, the pre-delivery, uh, you're sitting in the car, and he's showing you through. The, no, no, we took it for a test drive, we know, you know, and I'm sitting in the back seat, my wife's in the driver's seat, and I'm going, where's the CD player? <laughs> I've already written the check, you know, where's, where's the CD player? And he's gone, there's never a CD player. I said, well, I've got a thousand CDs that I like to put six a time in the car and hadn't really researched this very well. And uh, <laughs> not like me, I gotta say. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, 
my daughter uh, said, I've got an iPod, Dad, you can put all your music onto an iPod and da 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 da. And of course, then we realised that as soon as you sync it up with your phone, it's in your, uh, your computer, it's in your phone and everywhere. Um, so I now listen to random music on shuffle. Okay. Um, on the way here, I'd have listened to, I think I'd listened to a Stevie Ray Vaughan track. Uh, it's very eclectic. Um, mm. And I think I listened to a track that nobody in Perth has probably heard of other than me. You might have heard it in a cafe, but I was in Andorra in the Pyrenees following the Tour de France, um, <laughs> as I do, uh, nice. some years ago. Yeah, you're a cyclist. I do I cycle. Yeah. I found that out. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who think I used to be bigger, I was. I'm now as fit as I've been in my life, which is fantastic. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I go across there when I can. But we were up in Andorra in the, in the mountains yep. in the middle of summer, and this guy was playing this Euro music just thumping it out and mm. uh, he was selling CDs and I bought it and uh, uh, this is a, an old thing about music I'm sure we all experience it that I put on that CD and I'm I'm taking it to the Pyrenees just just like that and that's my cruising CD and uh, I'll play the whole album on the CD at home wow. when I'm doing work at my desk in my home office yeah. and I'll just get into the zone with this uh, so I, it's a mix of music in the car yeah. uh, sometimes it's uh, oh it's Friday night footy mate it might be on 720 <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had a discussion with you a few weeks ago. You're an Eagles. I am an Eagle. Yeah. Yes. So how are we going? Could you have asked me that question a couple of years ago? I don't know. It's, uh, yes, changeable times, Gary. Changeable <laughs> times. Um, yeah, bring the young blokes through. Okay. Let's go back to what were the other big bands of, um, get off the Eagles, of, of the Fatty Lumpkin Bakery era? What, yeah. Were there, um, any, anyone else that you... Look, there were some about? there were some really good bands around. There were some original bands. And in fact, if I can tell you a little bit about the Lumpkin story, because I, you know, I was one of a series of bass players. That a lot of Perth bands changed lineups very easily in those days. Mm. We kind of didn't know what we had in a way, and mm. and, and we'd sort of go musical differences. I want to pursue that direction, so you mm. change a couple of members. Um, the original Lumpkin um, was formed. When I was in a share house in Subi, John Meyer was sharing a room with me. Uh, Dennis James had shared in that house, another legendary Perth guitarist. Absolutely. Um, and uh, when, we must go back to that, actually. There's a great era when Mojo's was the Stone Crow and the fleet, yeah. the US fleet used to come to town and we were to get around that this guy, Dennis James, played like Hendrix and the whole fleet would be in, in Mojo's, as we now know it. Mm. Um, but, um, Do you want Lump to talk about more about that now? Or? Uh, yeah, we could probably move that through to, yeah. through to Lumpkin because that was a great era where, you know, again, small PAs and things, but just great musos. And mm. one of the things that I discovered, there was a... There was a moratorium on English music or British music on Perth radio in about 1970. Yeah. Um, so a lot of Perth bands started covering. We, we did a version of All Right Now. I think it's been consigned to the dustbin. I hope it has because it was just <laughs> awful. It was overproduced. Uh, but you know, favourite bands of mine like Free, you, you know, you'd you have to buy the album to hear them because they wouldn't, they yes. wouldn't play them on the radio. Some yeah. royalty arrangement. Um, but um, Perth bands because of the isolation of Perth and because of things like that, became very good live players. I think we all prided ourselves mm. on sounding like the record, yeah. which, you know, and we, a lot of us were copy bands in those days. But what was different about, well, the musos just became very, very good, you know, the, uh, and, and, and they, they honed their craft. I mean, when Dennis James and those guys, we, we'd sit till all hours of the morning listening to Jeff Beck's Bacola on a crap little record player with a dodgy needle you know and you had to l try and learn the stuff and yes. play it and you really couldn't hear it that well yeah. you know so whatever i played back then guys with the wrong notes i'm <laughs> blaming the record player um but lumpkin was one of the first bands that came out of perth that played totally original at yeah. the start but it wasn't commercially successful mm. and ultimately the band morphed into a partly original and partly cover band um, John Worrell wrote some amazing songs. Mm. He wrote most of the originals. Um, and How so, good was his voice the other, the other yeah. week at Paco's gig? Yeah, oh. yeah. So, well, the fallback wasn't that good, Gary. I couldn't hear it. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are you listening, Whitey? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Whitey's fault, I think. I think it was just roaring. Yeah. Too many martial amps. Uh, yeah, and, yeah uh, the, the, well. the horizontal stack. You know, yes. was good. Um, but um, no, John was a, a great songwriter and, and a great singer. But mm. um, and, and that band 
went to great places, you know, I mean, songs like The, the Man Who Owned the Sea and things mm. like that in, in, in later iterations were good. But going back to what other bands were around, there was a band called Stonehenge mm. and they played all originals and, and I was in Lumpkin at the time playing 50-50s and I just used to admire those guys. Chris was, uh, I can't even remember who, his surname. Yeah, who was in that band? Yeah, nobody no. I can remember. Okay. The bass player had a Rickenbacker. I was dying yeah. to get it off him because I was into Chris Squire at that stage. <laughs> right. Nobody, else, no other Rickenbackers in Perth. Try and get a Rickenbacker these days. Yeah, well, awesome. I've got one on the wall, but it's but it's a reissue. But uh, yes. you know, the, the old ones are hard to get. Yeah. Um, the um, yeah, the, the uh, Stonehenge were a band. It was totally originals, and and they just had they had the charisma about them as well. It could have been the next bakery, but. Mm. Um, but didn't quite sort of make it. But yeah. there was there was a a big thing in those days about it, if you were a sort of heavier band and you were doing prog rock, either your own stuff mm. or you were pulling on the Blue Oyster Cult or you know th those sorts of bands. And we were uh, once Rex Bullen joined the band and, and added the sort of keyboards and the Moog synthesizer. We were doing Edgar Winter's Frankenstein, mm. and it was yeah. basically note perfect, and it just it blew the band away, let alone yes. the crowd. You know, <laughs> how did we do that? You know. Yeah. Um, and because uh, Rex was just fabulous yes. and uh, bless his soul. So, uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the other bands that came through, the, 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 the other side of the bands were the sort of more commercial bands. And, and those of us on the sort of heavier side tended to call them fruit bands. Yes. A slightly derogatory term. Um, whereas we were, what, what's the alternative to fruit? Oh, I don't know, we were heavy. Which reminds me of Bad News on the Road, that sort of um, yeah. uh, that sort of movie about you know the band splitting up because they couldn't agree what style of music they yes. played. Um, but um, all things must change, uh, and uh, I left Lumpkin at the same time that Rex did. Uh, I was in a uh, short-lived band with Al Al Cash uh, after that, and Rob Searles called Jasper and Wendy Bailey, whose yeah. names come up tonight. Yeah, Wendy Bailey. I've got a. Yeah. Um, Fatty Lumpkin, Don't Knock My Boogie. Yes, there's a bit of bass playing on that that Al I'm familiar Cash with. is on there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, well, I may as well just... Here you go, Mrs. John. Strachan, yeah. whatever your name is. Um, Pub Legends 2, um, Volume 2, all proceeds go to Pekka. Fantastic. That's good. And, um, yeah. yeah, Fatty Lumpkin's definitely on there, so... Um, yeah, just... and they did several, several singles, mm, uh, yeah. Gary. Um, one of the shames about the sort of serious bands of those eras is they didn't really do publicity shoots or do videos or anything so we've got very little yeah. footage of that little bit of clip that's yeah. taken on a super eight at the rolling stones concert at the my moment. favorite bass player mike mike glenn Dinning playing bass on that uh, it's a hard uh, hard one to live up to <laughs> <laughs> so we have this guitar here yes michael yeah and we're going to do something with this, everyone we? signs the guitar when they come in and i'm and look, Ray there's Hockey. a spot under Ray Van Ross, and yes. Ray Van Ross is one of the most beautiful singers you would ever hear in your life. Yes. Uh, and I've been seeing you for ages, Ray, but if you're watching this, love yep. your work. Um, no one can ever read my signature, Gary, but that's it. Because Glenn Denning is way too hard. But to I know that one will, I, I know that one is you, so. Thanks, mate. So I can and read that. Look, yeah. this guitar here will, I'm hopefully trying to arrange a, um, a lot of money for charity hmm. for this guitar and um all will be revealed and you've ruined soon. it with our signatures no 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 <laughs> that that's why people will pay good money <laughs> oh i get it man yes definitely <laughs> there's some great bass players on there like paul reynolds and yes and beautiful like. player. so beautiful yeah player. So there's yeah. um there's lots of names on there and and uh, hopefully we can raise some good money for that for charity. Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to talk to a friend of mine called Jamie McCanty, Slim Jim. See if he can. Yes, I've heard of Jamie. See if he can get us on the uh, telethon. I got dragged onto stage at the end of Peko's gig to sing backing vocals <laughs> and "Long Way to the Top" with Steph and Jamie. It was uh, it was great. I think uh, a few people are calling him something. What was that name yes, on Facebook? Well, I can't remember. But, uh, oh, I don't do Facebook. Don't you? Tell me about this new thing. Facebook. Yeah, see, in my days there was faces and books, but now it's come together. No, yeah, it's come together, yeah. Mm, yeah. You don't do uh, computers, Facebook, nothing? Uh, no, yeah. I'm sort of a bit of a dinosaur. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah. I've discovered iTunes. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's good. Well, at least you can play your music in your car now. <laughs> That's true. Because there's no CD player. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, okay, if you were deserted or stranded on a deserted island. Stranded on a deserted island. Which album? Now, Someone said to me sometime, well, how can you ask this question? Because if there is no power, how can you play an album? Well, you could have it on your iPod. But is you that qualified? You don't have an iPod. 
No, I do have an iPod now. No, but you don't have a phone. Oh, you can play it on yeah. your iPod, I suppose. Hmm. So you could charge your battery before you went. Yeah, you need a really long battery charge, but yeah. so you get a, a day's worth of music on a desert island. Okay. So, which album? Which album? Which album? Um, so many. I, I, I actually, I've got three of my favourite albums up there, three of my favourite bass players, but um, I brought in nine albums Jack because, Bruce. yeah, Jack Bruce, Jacob Astoria, Stanley Clark, all the stories to tell about all, but it all started for me with McCartney. Um, and I actually, I really wanted to be a, a guitarist and I, the, the reason I got into playing bass, ha having played story. bass in the brass band, there was an audition and all, all these guys, there was a bass player needed and a guitarist needed. I was one of about 20 guitarists that turned up, no bass players. I want to join a band. <laughs> Next day I'm out trading the guitar on the bass. Um, but the further the Beatles went, the more McCartney's bass playing got seriously melodic and, mm. and very creative. You know, the yes. come together and those sorts of songs, just beautiful idea, like mm. Prudence, beautiful bass lines. Um, so that was the, kind of like the start of it. Mm. And uh, uh, I actually bought the Beatles White Album when I was on holidays in the UK with my parents when I was 16 years old. We went back for a holiday five years after coming out here. Mm. And the two albums I bought were Beatles White Album, Hot Off the Press, um, and Wheels of Fire by Cream. So disparate but uh, but i really mm. liked and, and having listened to all this on commercial radio yep. as we did in those days cream hendrix that sort of thing was the the direction i was heading so, so the answer to your question is the beatles white album yeah uh, diversity of songs never never particularly keen on side four number nine mm. but um yeah. however uh, the other three were just a i mean harrison's songwriting had hit Wonderful Heights, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, one of the most beautiful yeah. songs ever written, even if it's played on ukulele. Another story there. Can um, you tell us that story? Oh, there's, a, there's an amazing kid on uh, TV, I saw mm. him about a month ago, and he did While My Guitar Gently Weeps solo on ukulele, yeah. and it was it brought tears to your eyes. It was incredible. Now, um, if you had Facebook, you would have already seen that. Long well, this is the great thing. You see, I discover stuff a little bit later in life. Mm. You know, I've actually switched on to Nick Cave in the last couple of weeks, but you know, I'm, sort of, I'm getting there. Yeah. This is all because of iTunes. It's yes. Yeah. yeah it's, technology is amazing. Embrace it. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I'm just hopeless at it, Gary. I, you know, I, I've spent a lot of my time in an office environment. I now work from home, but uh, you know, I've, I've worked in offices where there were IT guys. You know? mm. Well, something's gone wrong. Guy comes over and fixes it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm very scared of what might happen at home if I... Uh, Don't be. Just put yourself out there because, cause, yeah, you just um, you find out so much. There's yeah. so many things out there. Well, I have to say that um, having watched almost all of your interviews, uh, very hard to get through them all because I keep... How do you do that then if you don't have... Uh, you just watch it? No, no, no. I, I do have a laptop. I, oh, okay. I can, I can do. Nice. I can find YouTube. Okay, there. it's all, it's all good. <laughs> you know, it's just Facebook and things like that. Social media is not good, um, but um, there's the stuff there that you never realised they had footage of. Mm. Yeah, you, know, you, you get caught. You get caught there for an hour or two very easily. Yeah. But one night I was sitting there watching Rod Stewart with the faces. Yeah. You know, clips I'd never seen. Mm. Small faces, clips I'd never seen. Yeah. I was going, this is outstanding. Yeah. I did an interview with. Uh, um, our producer Simo and, and with Peko at the, at yeah. Ho in Hollywood actually yeah. um, after, in the aftermath of yes, the Yes, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure you'll see it soon. Yeah. But um, yeah, Peko talks about Mick Linden in renting a room. Uh, no, he was renting He was renting place, from me, yes. And you came home one day and said, through him Have a listen to that. Tape and said, have a listen to that. Blew his mind and, and that was the average well. white band, or was it Tower of Power, or both? Average white band, and then he got onto Tower of Power, which then just yeah. sent him to the stratosphere. Yeah, yeah. Which is about the time we had the famous Musos versus club owners and bouncers footy match. Okay. Which turned out exactly how you might imagine. Right? It was an all-in. <laughs> uh, all the Musos won all. because we could run faster. <laughs> um, and, uh, and and most of the bouncers attacked the keg at half time. So, uh, but uh, yeah, Peko, I think Peko started the fight and probably ended the fight in that one. Um, but uh, no, Peko, uh, wonderful man, uh, tragic what he's going through, and, and we wish him all the best. Mm. Uh, but uh, he and I were inseparable for a while. We um, yeah, he talks uh, very highly of you, Nick. Um, yeah, we we did all the stuff that young blokes do. Um, mm. We went to he's a 
used to play I think juniors or reserves for Perth. Uh, I was a Claremont guy, don't hold it against me. Uh, we'd go to every Claremont Perth game, especially if it was at Claremont. We'd play nine holes of par three golf at Claremont, go to the <laughs> game, da 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 da. Pecco would be in the big Pontiac Firebird, red and black for Perth. Um, fantastic uh, incident one day sitting in the Thomas Street going to the footy and uh, sitting at the lights, probably about third back, and there's a you know, guys next door, big red firebird. I think it was a firebird, John. I hope it was. Um, uh, anyway, uh, lights change. Guys in front of us move. We move. Guy next to us chases. Guy in front of him hadn't moved. <laughs> <laughs> a great story. I think I will remember that. Oh, uh, but no, we had some, some good years. Uh, my favourite memory of Pecco, whilst we were on about him, was you know, City Hotel gets a mention now and then. And the uh, when he was playing the three piece with Johnny Meyer, I was I think, studying for my real estate license or something. And uh, uh, at about nine o'clock, I sort of wandered up to the, the, the city hotel and uh, uh, Pecco is singing, uh, uh, I've been waiting for a girl like you. You know, the, sort of, that, that beautiful high voice mm. and perfect sort of pitch, you know, and the, the huge kit and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, he was just in his element, right? Yeah, he had the biggest gong. Absolutely. Biggest kit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That was good. You brought a bass along tonight, man. I, I did, mate. Um, Being a bass player, I just yeah. wanted to ask you why and uh, what that means to you. Yeah, um, I came across this in very strange circumstances. So, like most blokes when you're young, you start off with a couple of dodgy basses and then you get your first Fender, which I think I got from Vox Adians, um, uh, about 1970. Um, Neil, Neil Farrington. Neil Farrington and Jack Van Der... Jack Van Der Swan. That's it. And yeah, yeah. Those are the days. Yeah, those are the days. Yeah. Down there... Oh, when Island, Street Mall. When Island... Used, yeah, downstairs. Down. Island Records had started. The albums yes. you could buy at that stage were Chicago One. God, tons of sobs by Free, which I mean, I've heard of the Yeah. yeah. No, I think yeah. you just started younger. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Um, this, this isn't it, because uh, I went through a change as a base. As, as your influences change, as you, as you went to do, OK, I'm going to do some power trio stuff with Dennis James, I always wanted to get a Gibson EB3 or something like that, so you mm -hmm. go to Gibson and then you go back to Fender. But I was in a band, it might have even been the Dave Hole band, um, uh, or one of those iterations, probably before Dave did his finger. Um, and I had to go and get the band weekly payment from Victor James Booking Agency. So Victor Kalis, Jimmy oh, Chaplin, yeah. little office in Subi, old house yes, in Subi. Um, and uh, so I walk in there and there's this beaten up square sided guitar case or bass case sitting against the wall. And I'm sitting there, you know, otherwise I wanted to have a bit of a chat, how the gigs go, da 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 da. And, uh, and I said, oh, uh, what's that sitting there? He says, oh, it's, a, it's an old bass. I said, oh, is it? Can I have a look? Interesting. I said, what's it doing here? He said, oh, it was a pommy band we had playing out here doing a few gigs like the Q-Dale. Um, broken up, wanted to go home. Bass player had spent all his money. Uh, he said, if I give you this bass, will you give me an airline ticket? And Jimmy said, yeah. So the bloke went back to the UK and here's this bass sitting there. And I said, how much do you want for it? He said, oh, cost of the airfare? Said, what was that? $240. Wow. I said, I'll take that. <laughs> it's a 62. It's, wow. it's a pre-L series. Um, I, it, we're talking 1972. It's probably only 10 years old. Yeah. Right? No one really it. knew that no one in really those knew days what was going to happen. Where it would yeah. be going from there. And uh, so it was in pretty awful nick. I think he had two A strings on it. It was hand painted, changed colour and that sort of thing. Took it off to Eric's Music Service in Ango Street, mm. North Perth. Uh, had it all rubbed back. Um, Young Eric or old Eric? Uh, they were both there, uh, but old Eric would have done the work and, and young Eric used to sort of hang about with us in those days yeah. and uh, it's been refinished uh, since then. I took it back to its original colour uh, with um, Perry Ormsby, All right. uh, had it uh, relicked with my 40 years of belt buckle marks on the back and everything and I put the Looks jazz bass pick up, oh, Scott Wise put the jazz bass pick up on it a few years ago because I realised that Vintage bases to hold their value need to be original condition. Mm. And after I'd owned it for about 25 years, I thought, are you ever going to sell this thing? No. Nah. Do you want it to play beautifully? And yes. you want to be more versatile? So I did all that to it. But that's kind of like, um, yeah, baby brother. Mm. Um, and uh, it's got a couple of friends hanging on the wall as well. Looks beautiful. Mm. So, it plays um, itself, Gary. I, I, yeah, it's not me. 
Mm. Nice. No, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at what you do, mate. Don't you worry. Um, like, uh, okay, playing bass, just a wonderful experience for yourself, obviously. Yeah, I, you change over the years. You, you yeah. get influenced by guys like those cats up there. Yeah. You, know, you can't play like Jack Bruce when you're playing certain styles of music. Mm. You can't play like Stanley Clark. When Is that the beauty, like, beauty of the music? Is that you, yeah. you have all these different choices and different yeah. styles and yeah. you explore different things? Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I've, oh. yeah I've, I've, I've tried to play, you know, some of the bands I've played have been able to, you've been able to play those sorts of styles. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing the jazz stuff or your know, Latin stuff and that sort of thing, there's there's more room for, uh, yeah, back at the bridge playing like a Jacko um, or slapping it like Stanley. Mm. You know, yeah. you don't get out there and play twelve bar blues and start slapping. Right. <laughs> in, in my <laughs> book, anyway. Yeah. No, excellent. Uh, but I, I got to say, I, I, I'm kind of the full cycle. I just, uh, as we did at Peco's gig mode, I think just sitting in the groove. You know, yeah, uh, and absolutely wonderful. Rocky Mountain just, Way. How many times can you play open E? Yeah, yeah. Gary. Yeah, both you and Paul Reynolds as well. He played yeah. in that night as yeah. well. It was absolutely fantastic to yeah. play with you guys. Um, what does the future hold for you, Mick? Um, I've got a big birthday coming up, Gary, and uh, I'm not going to confess to it, but it's got a, oh, you're very kind, mate. No, it's got a six in front of it, and it's, <laughs> and it's not a zero on the end either. But um, sixty-eight. Uh, no, no, no. To come down a little bit. Okay. No, I'm, I'm 65 in a couple of days, and wow. uh, and and proud of you know what I've what I've done with my life. I'm very happy with my life. There's been, been, been a couple of U-turns. Um, nearly went off to Singapore with a clan when I was 17, except Mum and Dad wouldn't let me. That's a I had um, that was a story. Yeah, you know, I was talking to John Lemin about. I think mm. he was the clan and went to Singapore and told us yeah. a few funny stories about that. So yeah, well, John can actually remember me auditioning with the band. Wow. he told me that, and uh, but I was you know just finished first year in uni and uh, the folks basically said, yeah, hang on, this is costing us a bomb, you're staying there. And, uh, <laughs> otherwise, who knows? But that was one of those sliding doors moments. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Rex, when he left Lumpkin, uh, called me about three weeks later and said, um, I've rejoined Bakery in Sydney, you know, Barry Leaf singing, da 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 uh, Steve Hogg's uh, not going to do it. Can you come across? Um, well, you like, guys are intertwined in cahoots, weren't yeah, all of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, you did that. You, you sort of, if you wanted to play a certain style of music, you knew the cats who could actually sort of do that and get mm. the, the sound that you wanted. So it depended on what you wanted to do. I, I mean, I when I dropped out of Lumpkin and Rex went east, I went back to Train, which is the band that I'd sort of joined uh, uh, Lumpkin from. And uh, and we put about three weeks of rehearsal in and went back out onto the road. And then mm. I got a phone call from Rex. And uh, I thought, no, I can't dud the guys. You know, I've done three weeks of rehearsal, so yeah. I'm sticking in Perth. And... Uh, and uh, yeah, don't don't regret it. Life takes a different mm. path. So, but where to from here? Um, yeah, two sons in their thirties, five beautiful grandkids. Uh, lucky man. Second marriage has given me a beautiful teenage daughter who's in first year uni. Wow. Uh, so I've got to keep working for a while. <laughs> um, but uh, but I think uh, you know a bit more travel. We we you mm. know uh, due to having a family in Scotland, loving. Italy, my wife's Italian, wow. um, Italian descent. Uh, we like France, I like cycling. Oh, we just want to keep going back. Mm. And uh, so maybe uh, in a year or so, I think maybe a bit a longer stay in yeah. some nice places. Yeah. yeah. And any unfulfilled ambitions? Uh, only maybe to see some other parts of the world that I haven't. So a bit, yeah. bit of the bucket list stuff, you know. Might have to scramble up Maku Piku before I get the Zimmer frame. <laughs> Do a few more. Um, uh, gigs uh, with Al Simpson and the boys and yes well, I would look forward to that in fact I think I suggested we all had such good fun that night it should be an annual event uh, yeah, for, for some, I love that. some purpose yeah. and uh, but it was yeah the fellowship of that that gig made it all sort of worthwhile mm. I, I still play um, in a blues rock band uh, it's been going for about 15 years we've never advertised we've hardly played a public venue other than the Two Rocks Tavern but it's all been word of mouth private parties and corporates and uh, what's that band called it's called the subdividers because we're all in the property industry okay so, do you want to give it the a subdividers uh, guaranteed to get the joint jumping guys <laughs> I, uh, I know an agent that could help you out if you want to get more gigs ah uh, well we'll have to talk about that yeah um do you collect anything 
Uh, bass guitars, sort of, not a huge collection, but I've, you know, I've got an L series jazz bass, uh, a 61 EB3, my Jack Bruce, mm. Andy Fraser bass. Wow. Um, it's got a, the switches on it, that bass, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a dog, actually. Every now and then the yeah. wiring packs in and you, you yeah. know, got to Take it back to the rock in and get it sorted. <laughs> Sorry, John. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, Andy McElroy. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, got the strat hanging there. Uh, and the other thing I seem to collect is uh, uh, cycling injuries, uh, Gary. Okay. Uh, every now and then. Groin related or? Uh, I did the AC here. It's only, that's the worst one I've had. But you get the odd uh, slide out of the back wheel and a few scars and like it's, it's all worthwhile yeah it's dangerous riding bikes in perth it's a lot of um, uh, road rage you've got to be sensible yeah uh, gary as, as somebody said in the paper the other day um you know they were talking about you know letting cyclists coast through stop signs and red lights and things like that and relying on everyone's intelligence oh yeah and sure they, they kind of said uh, sure way to die so the, the, the common sense of the average cyclist and the road courtesy of the average car driver is not the good foundation for road safety absolutely not <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. So, what would you put in your gravestone? Uh, still smiling. Still smiling. Uh, glass half full. Um, try to uh, oh, look. Everyone has their dark moments. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a fight or two. Things, some things haven't gone particularly well in life, but um, I tend to be pretty optimistic. Um, pretty. Upbeat, you know, if you, if you if you can't just be positive, and if you just try and brighten mm. the conversation and everybody else and kick things along, I used to actually think, you know, as a young guy and you're full of self doubt, and you're at uni that I wasn't quite as serious as a lot of the other guys. You know, mm -hmm. I thought, um, but I seem to have the ability to actually, you know, lift a conversation or mm. you know, maybe help pull some people through. So I'll just keep telling dad jokes and dancing badly and doing whatever I can to embarrass my daughter and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Dad. love love life. Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I got that plenty of times. No, and I must say that you, all your emails, when I'd email to everyone in the group, you'd always be the guy coming back with the funny comments and stuff. So, I like to think there's a well, I think yeah, the goons are to blame. Yes, um, there's, there's a nice little aside. What's your favourite TV show? Ah, oh, my favourite yeah. radio show would have been The Goons. Um, TV, look, I think you guys have had F Troop mentioned too often on your show, yeah. but it was on my list as well, along with Hogan's Heroes and those things. I used to watch everything musical, you know, Commotion with a K. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Bandstand, you know, as a, as a kid, you did, yeah, as a country Eric kid. Eric Sykes. Eric Sykes, The Plank. Yeah. How good. Two yeah. Ronnies. Oh. It's, it's all good. British, here, British humour. Here's today's football. <laughs> <laughs> Put a football on, but you know. But well, the, uh, next week yeah. we have um, Peter O. Beep, Lucille Beep. Yeah. <laughs> I like the, uh, the the police reports they used to do on the two Ronnies, which is uh, yeah, there's been a bad accident on the M25. A uh, a prison van full of prisoners has uh, had a crash with a, a cement truck. Uh, police are looking for hardened criminals. <laughs> <laughs> That's my humour. There's a skit I saw of Ronnie, Ronnie Barker, uh, no, Ronnie, the, the smaller Ronnie, yeah, Ronnie, Corbett. Yeah, Ronnie yeah. Corbett. He walks into a, a fruit shop saying, oh, with yes. a blackberry, so I have a problem with my blackberry. My blackberry. <laughs> yeah, he did that on. well late in his life. That was, yes. uh, yeah. Oh, obviously, because of the technology, technology they were talking about. And we're yeah. talking about your, yeah. your my anxiety of <laughs> technology. <laughs> okay, so something that we don't know about Mick or Michael Glendinning, but um, something that nobody knows. Uh, my my yeah, my family probably only knows this. It's not unusual for a kid who grew up in beside the railway tracks of the UK, but uh, I am a collector of model steam locomotives and wow. carriages. And uh, one day I will build the layout that my father built for me, and I'll probably build it and leave it to my grandkids. But uh, I've got a bit of a display happening and, uh, and I buy way too many books, sorry darling, um, <laughs> of, uh, you know, steam train numbers and things like that. So it's just one of those things. So have you done the Hotham Valley? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I write, I've ridden most of the restored steam lines in, uh, in the UK. Wow. Yeah. My wife uh, took my, one of my grand, grandkids on the steam train mm. a couple of months ago. Yeah. They're such I, a, I missed out because I was gigging, yeah, but... Yeah, they're yeah. such a human thing, you know, they, they, they breathe. You know, yeah. The things that come into the station, mm. they've they, they got a life. And, um, like a Motor of Breath by Jethro Tull. Yeah. Great song. And we watched the, um, what is it, the 
Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes. A lot now. Yeah. Steam train and there's, you know, they're all laying shit on the steam train because yeah. there's new trains and this train. And, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. kids sort of love that, that sort of thing. Yeah. It's the animation. Of I them. relate to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, do. they do. And yes, like somewhere in our house, there is miles of wooden track with a little Thomas somewhere. <laughs> so you're rebuilding all of that? And that's a goal to. I think we've got a yeah we have a box full. So every every child that's grown up in our family has sort of wow. played with a Thomas the Tank Engine set and those sorts of things. But wow. uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd uh, see myself uh, you know doing a layout and building the. I know this all sounds terrible, doesn't it? You know, no, it does sound great. And things. It's uh, oh. yeah, good for the soul, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Look, uh, w really wonderful having you here. Thank you, Gary. Um, you're a real true person, Nick. And Thank you. Nice to meet you, and I've only known you for. Probably yeah, four yeah. or five weeks, and yeah. we've had a, a sort of distant acquaintance with each other. Yeah, and, I used yeah. to watch you on stage and go, "Wow, that's me." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you go and say hello, or no, you probably just you know, <laughs> that young age, you, yeah. you know, you don't know. But again, yeah, I think just the uh, the whole organisation that you guys put into the the Peco gig and bringing guys from just slightly different generation. It was mm. kind of nice to uh, sort of. Um, see blokes in their 50s and they were in the young band you know so the yeah. rest of us that were in our 60s were in the sort of old band and it was great that you got on stage at the end i know well you said yeah. jamie mccanty dragged you up but, yeah. but just you were one of the older guys that actually got back on stage and yeah. joined in in that bit and i thought that was sort of unique yeah well the spirit of the evening was, was pretty hard to resist in fact what i what i enjoyed sorry to drag it out but don't um, talk about elvis no 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 it wasn't that no, at all okay. um, <laughs> i don't think that's persona non grata of it no, um I sat with my uh, wife and friends out and watched the first bands. Oh, set. okay. And uh, Ian just commanded the stage, and uh, it was just you know, Steph was fantastic, yeah. and uh, and I just I just love it. I mean, if you if you'd asked me one of your usual questions about um, what was the last concert you went to, I was going to say the Peco gig, because I was in the front row for the Mate, the first band. You can ask me some questions now. Well, would you like me to? Well, if you like. Okay. Oh, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last concert you ever went to? The last concert I went to was, um, God, that's a really hard question. I specialise in those. Um, the last concert I went to was probably, um, I can't remember. That's a sign of age, mate. There you go. I've got dementia coming on. <laughs> I've been diagnosed. Oh, she's coming on to the show, is she? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, only joking. Um, I went to uh, ACDC. Ah, the last CB Oval. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I went with my my son plays very good guitar, by the way. Stuart, there's mm. a plug. Uh, doesn't play in a band, but plays beautiful guitar. Le Just learnt at the Cliff Cliff, Cliff Linton School. Oh yeah. Um, and um, and someone we should probably have on the show, Cliff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and Pretzel Logic are playing this Thursday at yeah. Ellington. Um, Do you want to give that? A quicker pl a better yeah. plug then? Well, this probably won't go to air, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, Stuart, I, I took Stuart, my son, along to an ACDC concert, and uh, I he turned up at my door, and I was wearing a white t-shirt. He said, "Why are you wearing a white t-shirt <laughs> to an ACDC concert?" I said, "So you can find me." Wow, it worked. That's interesting. The sea of black people. Yes, is that? Right. Yeah, and what a great band! And I tell you what, that that was uh, that was a great show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they still perform, and I right. suspect they're even perhaps a tad older than me, a couple of the members of the band. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Brian Johnson, a good old Geordie boy. He was a Geordie boy. Yeah, yeah. way Amen. Yeah. Mark Knopfler, oh, there's millions of Oh, I know. Well, he's really a Scot, Gary, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Glaswegian. <laughs> <laughs> Mick, like, so nice to have you in here. Gary, it's a pleasure. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, I, look, I, I think what you guys do with this series of shows is fantastic. Thank there's, you. There's, there's so much history. There's been a couple of attempts to write books and things, but this is a great way of cataloguing it. Yeah. And uh, uh, and I'll recommend some other people to you because I think we. Uh, we who who would it. you recommend to come on the show? Nick? Well, I, uh, you've got John Meyer coming on, I think, which yes. is which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I um, it'd be great if you could get uh, John Worrell to, to sort of talk about the various bands that he was in. I agree. Yeah, yeah. he was awesome. The Peco gig. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, and such a, a a private guy. You know, yes. I, I visited John when, when he was back in the UK and he was living in Nottingham. And, yes. Uh, uh, Esther and I went over there for a holiday and I, funnily enough, I think it was my 50th birthday the day before we were leaving and John's ex-wife Kay was sitting in the Subi Hotel and I was there with all my friends and I said, oh Kay, I said, uh, how's John going? Is he still in the UK? Yeah, I, I'm going there next week. Oh, 
here's his phone number ring him up. So wow. I get as far as Birmingham, get a phone booth, ring John, Mick, where are you? Birmingham. <laughs> Come for dinner? Yeah, okay. Yes. Um, and I went to a workers' club with him, and he was doing a solo thing with the MIDI oh, backing wow. and playing keyboards and flute and singing and mm. uh, and fantastic. But the great thing was that that night we sat and you know, demolished a bottle of duty free scotch as you do, <laughs> um, and he played me all these demos that he'd made of all these beautiful songs that he'd written since he'd left Perth. And they were great. They were all great. Yeah. They were all great. Fabulous. Such a good songwriter. Yeah. Mm. But. Um, yeah, there's some some great stories in Perth. So, can you tell the camera? Can you tell John out there to come John, on the show? <laughs> you need to come on the show. It's painless, <laughs> relatively painless. Absolutely. Yeah. And, Look, and Gary's such a nice guy, and he'll even let you ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, thanks very much, Gary. Mate. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Look, that's all um, for this episode. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. Thank you.